for this trick, let's say I hand the deck over to the spectator and they give it a nice shuffle. After they're done shuffling the deck, I would explain to them that we're going to need a small packet of cards. So around this many, but we could do less, but I wouldn't go with any more than this amount. So however the spectator would like to do this, whether they want to lift up on a packet or we riffle down, however they feel comfortable, we're going to need a packet of cards. So let's say they lift up on a packet and I say, you can shuffle those in your hands if you would like. And after you're done giving those a shuffle, go ahead and spread them out face up on the table. So let's say they do that right here. After this, I would hand them the next card and I would explain to them that they're not going to look at the card, but they are going to place the card in between any two cards here in this stack they can remember. So let's say right here, and if they wanted to, they could push the card in all the way. They can even square up the packet and then pick up this whole thing and place on top of here, just like that. After they have done all that, I would take back the cards and say, okay, we're going to go to your first two cards you are going to remember. So in this case, we have the nine of diamonds, okay, and we also have the three of diamonds. So go ahead and remember those for me, whether you write them down or whatever. And I would place the stack over here and leave the box on top of it, just so we can't get back to the stack. After this, I would explain to the spectator that I would like them to say stop at a card they can actually remember. So let's say they call out stop right here, and I would ask them, King of Diamonds or Four of Spades? Let's say they go with the King of Diamonds. I say, okay. Go ahead and write down the King of Diamonds while you're at it. And we will lose your King of Diamonds somewhere into the packet, just like this. And we can actually give the deck a few cuts as well. And let's return to that stack we had previously, right here. You placed a card in between the 9 and 3 of Diamonds. You didn't even look at the card. And I think you had the King of Diamonds. How about you turn over the card in between the 9 and the 3 and see what you have. And I think you'll be amazed to see that you have the King of Diamonds. Alright, so that is going to be the trick we are going to be learning today. If you would like to learn the secret behind this, don't go anywhere because we're going to be doing the tutorial right now. Okay, so that shows a different thing. I thought I would change up the, I guess you could call it intro after the performance. But here is going to be the tutorial. For this trick, you can use any deck, and you don't even need a full deck, which is really good for this effect. And in case you're wondering about these cards, these are actually the Camp 52 cards I got sent from Cabin Booth. So I made a whole video on the little gift bundle he sent me. So I will leave that video down below for you to check out. These are the original Camp 52 cards that he sent. And he also sent me the prototype deck as well. And he also signed it. And I will show you a little bit. The deck, he sent a signed business card. that says congratulations from Cabin. Threw in a real deck as well as the sign prototype and joy and some other stuff. So if you want to check out that video, once again, I will leave it down below. But that's just, just in case you were wondering what he sent. So here's how you're going to do the effect. You're going to need the cards, obviously. And I have the card box. Now you don't need the card box. You can use a water bottle, a Rubik's Cube. Whatever you would like. So here's what you're going to do for this effect. You're going to hand the deck over and you're going to have it shuffle. That's fine. After this, you explain to the spectator you're going to need a small packet of cards. 
Now, when I say small, you don't want really one to five cards. You want a little more. So I would say around 10 to 15. You could do 20, but I wouldn't go any more than 20. So I usually stick around 10 to 15. I might demonstrate what it looks like. So they can really do this however they would like. You can set the deck down. They can lift up a portion. You could riffle down. Whatever they feel comfortable with. So let's say they lift up on this amount. That's totally fine. They want to put some back. Go ahead. They want to add some more. That's fine as well. After this, they can really shuffle up the packet like this. And I'm also going to be going over this one more time at the end also. Because there's two possibilities that could happen. So in case you don't understand something the first time, hopefully you can understand it the second time around. After they're done, they're going to take the packet, turn it face up, and spread it on the table. And what you're going to do is explain to them, you're going to hand them the next card. You don't want them to look at the card, but you would... But you would like for them to place the card in between any two cards here they can remember. Now, the reason they don't look at this card is because it's going to be switched out with their selection. If they look at this, Jack of Hearts, and if they selected the King of Diamonds, when this card is turned over and it's the King, they'll notice something is up. That's why you don't want them to look at it. They can really place it in anywhere, let's say here, and they can actually push it in all the way as well. After they're done with this, you're going to pick up the stack and you're going to put it on top of the deck. Here's the first move you're going to do. You're going to spread through and you're going to come to the face down card and that first face up card beneath it. This case, the eight of clubs, and you show them they have the eight of clubs. You're going to take this face down card, place it halfway down like this, and then take the eight of spades and the rest of these face up cards and show the eight of spades. You're going to line these up with the eight of clubs and the rest of the deck. And because you have this out jog card, I like to tilt my hand up a little. Be careful with this break here. They don't show that. And I also like to take my index finger Push down on the cards on top here. It's going to bevel down some way. And with your hand tilted up, it should hide this face down card. But here's the move you're going to do that. This is going to be hidden. So that's why I do this whole thing. That I'm going to hide the move. You're going to come over. You're going to push down on the card and in. And then lift up. So you don't take all of those cards that it looks like you took okay you're gonna leave half of the stack behind so then without flashing anything place these on the table and you can put the box on top of it that's why i have the box or something so here's what that might look like from the beginning i'm gonna do that move and then i'm gonna do everything over one more time so we're gonna have the card spread out Let's say they take this one, they don't look at it, they place it in between any two cards, and they push it in. This time, they can square up everything and place it on top of the deck. You're going to take these, and I like to go one by one. You don't have to, though. You just want to get to that first face-down card. You're going to show you have the eight of clubs. You're going to take this face-down card, put it halfway on top, and then show eight of spades. So take the eight of spades and all the cards on top of it and line it up with the eight of clubs and the rest of the deck like this. And then if you want to hide this break, which is going to hide the move, you can tilt your hand up a little. Don't show this part, but if that does happen, you could bend the deck like this. My index finger is applying pressure up. My four fingers are squeezing like this. But you can go ahead and move the cards down like this. And then you're going to come in the back with the break. Push down and in. Lift up everything. Put it down without trying to spread anything. And put the box on top of it. So now you put the, a, a different card. And then the rest of the stack right here. That's the move you're going to do. So let me go over that in real time. okay? Just so you can see what this might look like. 
So let's say the spectator is going to call out stop for a packet, okay? So I say okay. You can either lift up a small packet or we can riffle down. Let's say we riffle down and they call out uh, stop. Obviously, we know right here. So then we're going to put it down. They can mix up this packet. It doesn't matter. Now you're going to spread this. And you're going to explain that this card they're not going to look at. But they can place it in between any two cards here they can remember. So let's say the two eights right here. They push the card in and they square up everything. They can pick up this whole packet and place it on top of the deck. Now let's take a look at the two cards here you place the face down card in between. So in this case, the eight of clubs and the eight of spades. And you could have had any two cards. Let's leave those right there. And just like that, you did the move. So now moving on, what you're going to do is pretty early on, during your pattern, doesn't have to be, but you want to get rid of this different card because the rest of these are going to be face down, okay? So you're going to want to catch a break above it. So you can do a pinky count, which I do have a video on, or you could riffle down the back. I think those are really only two options available. If you have a different way, you can do that. But now here's what you're going to do. You're going to come over and you're going to have a thumb break. So your three fingers in the front of the packet, index curled on top, thumb in the back. Now, if you know the biddle move by any chance, then this is essentially what you're doing. You're going to start peeling cards off, and I like to line them up with this break card, or from their perspective, the top of the deck, like this, because this is going to make the move easier, I think. So you're going to do this a few times while explaining they're going to choose a card, and then one of two ways. You can either come over... And you can line up everything and move your thumb away, okay, and continue peeling. Okay, so you drop that card off. Or what you can do is you can come over, line up everything like this. You can actually put your pinky in there and then spread off the two. It doesn't matter, but now that jack is totally, is uh, I guess the word is ditched. I couldn't think of the word there. And then they're going to call out stop. So let me go over that move in real time, just so you can see what this might look like. And make sure you don't flash either after you ditch that jack. That's the worst thing. So here's what the move might look like. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to start spreading through the cards, and I want you to call out stop whenever you would like. And right there, I ditched the jack. So now they're really going to call out stop. So let's say they call out stop right here. And I ask them, queen of diamonds or three of hearts? Now I'm going to be going over both ways here. But the first way is the way I did it in the performance. Let's say they choose the card on top of the packet. You say, all right, the queen of diamonds. All you're going to do is you're going to have to put this queen on the bottom of this packet, okay? So you're going to need to catch a break below it. So I would do the pinky count, but you don't want people to actually see that. So something I've been playing around with is when you come over and you can square up these packets, probably test this out in a mirror to see which angle works best for you. But when you come over, you can just push over the card, pull it back, and catch a break. So then when you come over, you can just lift up everything, and now you're good right there. Okay? And then you're going to continue peeling them just like that. So let's go over all of this from the start. So I'm going to have you choose a card here. But I'm going to have you call out stop on a card. So just call out stop when you see one you like. Stop. All right. So the queen of diamonds or the three of hearts. What would you like? The queen of diamonds. Okay. Now, obviously, that wasn't the best. So make sure yours looks better than mine. But you're going to want to 
Go ahead and peel a few more cards off once you have that queen, okay? But the thing is, you don't want to go too far down in the deck, because you might expose those face-down cards. So once you're good here, you can drop this packet. Just make sure when you drop it, you don't flash anything, okay? So something I might do is go tap, tap. I might drop this. Then you can drop this half. And now when you turn the deck over, keep in mind you don't want to flash, because now this card is switched out. And you want to put the rest of your packet on top of it. So what I do is I move the box over, and I pick up the rest of this stack, and I put it on top. And then I lift up at the break like this. Because there's going to be a break from the face-up cards. <coughs> Excuse me. From the face-up cards to the face-down cards, okay? So if you're really good and you can see your break, you can lift up and spread and show that you have the Queen of Diamonds right there. But I don't like that. That's the original way, and I don't like that. Because if you lift up, okay, you might lift up only this many. They might see some face-up cards here. If you go ahead and just try to lift some up, well, here's one eight they remembered. Here's a face-down card and another eight. You have all of these. That doesn't look good either. So what do I do? No one's going to suspect it. Just lift up below the break. I say around half the deck. Spread these out. Then you can show that that one card right there in the middle is the Queen of Diamonds. So, that is the first way you can perform this. Let me show you the next way you can do this as well. Which is just the same way, except you're going to peel off the card from the one half. So let me show you what I mean. Oh, great. Okay, well, let me go ahead and pick these up. Okay, so let's try this out one more time. Okay, so you're going to have the deck shuffled up. And you're going to have them lift up at a small packet of cards. So let's say right here. After this, they're going to spread out that packet. You're going to hand them the next card and have them place it face down in between any two cards here they can remember. So let's say we just go with the King of Hearts and the Ace of Spades. They can push the card in all the way and then square up the packet. After this, you're going to have them place the whole stack on top of the deck. You're going to pick up the deck. And you're going to spread through to the first face-down card. Or the first face-up card beneath the face-down card. You can show them, we have the King of Hearts. Take this face-down card, place it halfway below the King of Hearts. Then take the Ace of Spades and the rest of the cards here. And line it up with the King of Hearts. And show them the Ace of Spades. After this, you're going to push down on this face-down card. Push in at the same time, and then lift up. So now you just ditch the first half of this packet. You can put these face uh, stack right there and put the box on top of it. Now you want to ditch this card. So what I do is I turn the deck over without flashing the face up cards here. I catch a break above it. I come over and do thumb break. I'm going to peel off a few cards. And then I'm going to do the Biddle move, essentially, to ditch it. I can peel off some more, and they're going to call out Stop. Say they call out Stop right here, and I show them King of Clubs or Jack of Hearts. 
here's the move you're gonna do. This is probably easier to do. If they name the Jack of Hearts, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over to grab the Jack, but while your thumb is on here, you're gonna put your pinky in and peel off the Jack, and now you have your break. So then you can come over already with your break, you can lift up on the Jack, and then peel off some more cards, just like that. So let me go over that one more time. If they named a card right here, the Jack, you're gonna come over, you can put your pinky right there, you can peel off the Jack, you can keep a break, come over and lift up on the Jack, and then peel off some cards. And then you can peel as many as you want, just be careful not to run into the face down half. And then you can drop this half, making sure not to flash. Drop this half. You can turn the deck over, making sure not to flash. Pick up this low half, put it on top of the deck. Pick up more than half the deck. Spread through and show that right here between the king and the ace is the jack of hearts. So, that is going to be today's trick. I hope you really enjoyed this. This is like part two of the Invisible Card series, which is a new series I've been working on. Basically, impromptu tricks or, with, or setup tricks that revolve around the Invisible Card or the Invisible Plot. It's essentially, uh, yes, non-gimmicked card tricks, okay, because the invisible deck is a gimmick deck, so I've been wanting ways to do this where you don't need a gimmick, so hopefully that made sense. Now, I did say there were going to be three tricks, but I but did some research and I saw that there were more than three, so I expect more than three. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're new here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later with part three. Bye.